Hi everybody. I uh, told Rosie that if she needed me to read to her kids, I would be happy to. And I was going to read this book, The Search for Delicious. It's one of my favorite books. I know um, probably Molly and Marianne know about it, but uh, she hasn't asked me, you haven't asked me to read for your kids and I want to read. So I'm recording this so you can play this whenever you want to in the uh, the Oh, the, I, I wanted to say the Bibles, the, uh, the pens and the Kennys as well. So I'm just going to get going. I'll do, um, so that I, I don't take up too much time with, uh, with this. I'll probably do it just a chapter at a time, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. The Search for Delicious by Natalie Babbitt. Prologue. There was a time once when the earth was still very young, a time some call the oldest days. This was long before there were any people about to dig parts of, of it up and cut parts of it off. People came along much later, building their towns and castles, which nearly always fell down after a while, and plaguing each other with quarrels and supper parties. The creatures who lived on the earth in that early time stayed each in his own place and kept it beautiful. There were dwarfs in the mountains, wold, dwell, wold dwellers in the forests, mermaids in the lakes, and of course, winds in the air. There was one particular spot on earth where a ring of mountains enclosed a very dry and dusty place. There were winds and dwarfs there, but no mermaids, because there weren't any lakes and there were no wool dwellers either because forests couldn't grow in so dry a place. Then a remarkable thing happened. Up in the mountains, one day a dwarf was poking about with a sharp tool, looking for a good spot to begin mining. He poked and poked until he made a very deep hole in the earth. Then he poked again and clear spring water came spurting up in the hole. He hurried in great excitement to tell the other dwarfs, and they all came running to see the water. They were so pleased with it that they built over it a fine house of heavy stones and made a special door out of a flat rock and balanced it in its, in its place very carefully on carved hinges. Then one of them made a whistle out of a small stone which blew a certain very high note, tuned to just the right warble so that when you blew it, the door of the house, rock house would open, and when you blew it again, the door would shut. They took turns being in charge of the whistle, and they worked hard to keep the spring clean and beautiful. But the spring they had discovered was in a cup of land, surrounded by cliffs, and eventually the spring began to fill up the cup, until after a while there was a little lake with the top of the spring house standing out in the center like an island. And the lake kept getting higher and higher. After a few years, the spring house was completely submerged and the dwarves could no longer get down to it, although they could see it easily through the clear water and could still make the door open and close with the whistle, just the same as before. The water in the lake began in time to fill up with creatures of its own, as water has a way of doing, and one of these creatures was a lovely little mermaid. The dwarves named her Artis, and one of them made her a pretty doll out of linked stones with a trailing fern fastened to its head for hair. Artis loved the, loved the doll very much and played with it all the time, and in exchange she promised to keep watch over the spring in the house of rocks now far down under the water. So the dwarves gave her the special whistle and she kept it hanging by a chain on a sharp bit of rock at the water's edge. Every morning she would blow the whistle to open the door and then she would dive down and play with her doll inside among the bubbles. At night she would come up and blow the whistle again to close the door and swim away to sleep. While all this was happening, the water in the lake had risen so high that it had began to spill over in one spot where there was a V-shaped gap in the cliffs, and it tumbled down into the dry and dusty place ringed by the mountains. It fingered itself into a great many streams and watered the land so well that everything was soon green and fresh. Forests sprang up and wool dwellers came there 
to watch over the trees, and then later the people began to arrive. They built towns, and they crowned a king, and they enjoyed a great many quarrels and troubles, all of which they created quite by themselves. The dwarves withdrew deep under the mountains, where they wouldn't have to watch, and they went on mining and almost never came out. In time, they separated into groups of two or three, each group mining where it chose, and they never lived all together again. The wall dwellers who, admire, who were admired by the people for their knowledge stayed in their trees and came down to answer questions from time to time. But after a while, they grew irritated by the foolishness of these questions and wouldn't always answer. Eventually, the people stopped coming to ask. And something very sad happened to Artis. One day, when she was in the spring house playing with her doll, she heard a new and pleasing kind of sound. She put the doll down and swam up to the top of the lake. There on the bank sat, sat a man, the first she had ever seen, making pretty music on a round box with strings pulled tight across it. Artis stayed to listen, hiding behind a water lily, with only her eyes and ears out of the water. After a while, the man put the round box aside and leaning over to drink from the lake, noticed the whistle hanging from its sharp bit of rock. He picked it up and blew it, blew through it, but he was only a man and couldn't hear the sound it made. As artists watched, in dismay, he started to toss it away, paused, looked at it, and finally hung it around his neck. Then he picked up his strange in instrument and wandered off. She cried to him to come back, but he didn't hear. Artis drove, dove trembling to the spring house, but the blast the man had blown on the whistle had made the door swing shut. The house was locked. Artis could peer through the cracks between the rocks and see her doll lying inside, but there is no way to get it out. After that, she was sad all the time. At night, she would swim up to the spot where the whistle had hung, and weep for hours. Someone heard her once and made a song about her, but no one could help her for the dwarves were far away. And in the meantime, in the land below, towns were built and burned and built again, and kings and their people lived and died and enjoyed their troubles for years and years and years. Artists and the dwarves, the wool dwellers, and the wool dwellers were largely forgotten except in stories and songs. Nobody, nobody believed they were real anymore except for an occasional child or an even more occasional worker of evil, these being the only ones with imagination enough to admit to the possibility of something even more amazing in the world than those commonplace marvels which it spreads so carelessly before us every day. That's the prologue. So there's a little tidbit I'll probably record another one and send it off but whoo it's it's interesting isn't it so i hope you enjoy it and uh stay tuned love you bye bye